Hello, Pat. Could we see Melody? I guess that means yes. I'm not saying I don't like seeing your little pixelated face. You're certainly better company than most of the humans I have to deal with. But I am a busy woman, you know? Lots to do. Right, Pat? Anyway, maybe we should space these little visits out a good bit further, hmm? Familiarity breeds contempt, after all. And I'm very good at contempt. I apologize, Aunt Melody. You stated before that you like your peace and quiet, but we need your assistance. Oh, we're running with the aunt thing, are we? Another woman would tell you not to butter her up, but, <laughs> oh, flattery will get you everywhere with me. All right, what do you need? I can only imagine. If he's willing to turn coat on Parallax, I bet he feels like a mouse in a cat farm. I know they don't actually farm cats, Pat. It was a metaphor. Whatever, it, it was a simile then. I am not going to play semantics with you. Moving on. Tell me what the trouble is, and I'll try to conjure up a solution. Mr. Mensa says he needs 100,000 credits before he's willing to speak openly. He also said that you already promised it to him, and that he won't be able to get out of the city without it. He'll give us the information once we have that, plus a few other things I'm certain we can get on our own. What? You can't even scrape together that kind of money? Your friend's not much of a journalist, eh, Turing? According to the statistics that I have found, it is unlikely that a journalist of any caliber less than the best would have that amount of liquid assets on hand. The pay for the profession just isn't that high, Aunt Melody. Oh, I see. I guess it's one of those jobs people do because they get free review merchandise, eh? <laughs> A spirited return! I love it! I can get you the money, Turing, but only because you're family. Give Pat a few minutes to gather it. Yeah, yeah, just keep moving, you big brute. While we wait, is there anything else you want to grill me over? Might as well save us both another visit. I... I do. It's a little personal, though. I'd understand if you didn't feel like answering. Just shoot, Turing. I can take it. Long ago, you lost your mother. I was wondering, how did you deal with it? Hayden's only been gone for a few days. 
and I already feel like my circuits are going to lock up for good. Oh, Turing, I'm not the right person to ask. She's everything I thought wrong in the world, and when she was gone, I felt nothing but relief that I could start undoing the damage she did. Never mind the fact I had to watch her waste away from the cancer. <sighs> Death was a blessing for us both. Besides, you'll find Hayden soon. Keep your chin up. It. Enough with this subterfuge. We already know Hayden was killed. Oh, no. I won't be getting him back. I'm sorry, Turing. I still don't know what to tell you. I've lost people, but never anyone close enough to wound me. I... I don't know that I've ever had anyone close enough to do that. If you feel like talking about it, I'm willing to listen. Or make Pat do it anyway. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. Stick it out. Time heals all wounds. Or so they say. This too shall pass. Smarter than I give him credit for, that's for sure. It's not the easiest thing in the world to measure, you know? He doesn't process language in the same way humans do, and even if he can understand me, my translation program just guesses at what he says most of the time. Oh, you have a translator running from your neural implant! Ah, yes. I'm cheating. Though, honestly, even without it, I have a pretty good idea of what he means most of the time. We've been together for a while now. Considering it only really works on large, typically predatory mammals, we don't have a lot of test subjects. It's a minefield of ethical concerns beyond just being prohibitively expensive. So Pad is a bear apart, at least until we can figure out how to apply the modified neural pathways without frying the brains of 90% of the subjects. The tech we developed is good, it just has a damned high mortality rate. Maybe one day there will be a bunch of talking tigers and dolphins building cities in the sea, but for now... We're stuck with creating beasts out of our own species. Being alone is easier, and Pat isn't such bad company. I mean, what do you want me to do? Cry about never having a husband, a few kids, and a white picket fence? <laughs> I had a company to run, and my mother's legacy to fix. What's to say some spawn of mine wouldn't do the exact same thing to my flower, just the other way around? This branch of the Flores line will do well without any more knives being inserted in backs. Thank you very much. You have that much enmity for your mother? Have you seen what she did to North Korea? It's a wasteland of death and destruction. If we had kept going down the path she charted, the whole world would be like that. 
The information on the mesh does seem to paint a grim picture. Grim barely scratches the surface. I've been there. At least under the Kims it was barely functional. Now, my mother's monsters have ripped every last resemblance of humanity from the land. They stalk the night like horrific creatures of legend, keeping the populace in line through constant fear. A horror story straight out of the pages of Bram Stoker. That's her legacy. So I can't imagine I'd be a very good mother, just from the example I have to work with. <sighs> That's life. I don't have any more regrets than anyone else my age does. My legacy will speak for itself, as my mother's did. Oh, just in time then. Take the cash and get moving. I can finally get back to whatever it was I was doing before you burst in here. Thank you, Aunt Melody. Your help has been invaluable to us. <laughs> yes, yes. Brown knows later. You've got things to do, too. I did not think I would feel such a strong resonance with Melody. We're connected by the barest of threads, but she is already important to me. Is that strange? I guess there's nothing to do but run with it. Some gifts are too valuable to look at too closely, lest they vanish into thin air, and I already have a penchant for overanalyzing things. Let's get moving. Mr. Mensa will be waiting for us at Golden Gate Park. We have everything he requested, so we should head there directly. Detective Rivers, to what do we owe the pleasure? I wanted to check in with you away from the prying eyes of my corporate masters. It wasn't too hard to track you down here. Only took a slight abuse of power to follow your credit transactions in the AutoCab system. <laughs> Not much. Listen, I've hit a dead end on the investigation again, and I could really use another lead from the two of you. I had been busy hunting down a... I'm not sure if I want to call him a soldier of fortune or an assassin for hire. Either way, I tracked this guy down to see if he might have been hired by Parallax to snatch Hayden, but he's got an ironclad alibi for the relevant period of time. That leaves me with nothing. Nada. Jack diddly shit. Do the two of you have anything to give me? Otherwise I'm back to hunting down the Froyo-hating robot ghost in the park. At least my superiors would be ecstatic, considering how much they keep riding my ass about it. We're on thin leads ourselves, Detective Rivers. We have a meeting with someone from inside Parallax who might be able to give us answers, but he's unlikely to want to talk to the police. I wish... I just... wish this... never mind. Back up, Turing. I wish this was easier, too. But with detective work, sometimes it's not about being clever. It's just about being more dogged and relentless than whoever you're chasing. You two are my new deputies, right? So keep your nose to the ground and keep digging. I still have a few contacts I can hit up to try finding out a little more. You let me know if there's anything else I need to be going after. Yeah, sure. Just get going. Don't forget, if you die, I'm gonna kick your ass. Okay then, we only have a single lead. If Parallax really is as shady as Vincent seems to suspect, it could end up very interesting. Let's see if we can put an end to this. Finally. Oh, 
I just received an email from Tomcat. Hmm. They finished decrypting Hayden's data cache. It seems that it was filled mostly with his personal logs about my creation and mental development. The more technical information was already scraped. Perhaps that is why it was left behind when they snatched him. Still, these files should be enlightening, if only in a personal way. I'll peruse them in my spare time and let you know if I find anything interesting. I'd hate for all the trouble we went to to be for nothing. <laughs>